All right, Shalom. First off, I want to start by saying all praises, honor, and glory is due to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Karkadash. That's all praises to who you ignorantly call God, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh. Ba'ashim meaning in the name, and Yahushai being the name of the only begotten uh, Son. I also want to say double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and, and peace and mercy to the hopeful light preaching, swear of truth and sincerity. My brother Taz Bob with a great with the Great Millstone Arizona camp. And um you know, I was listening to the Mississippi camp. He sparked a lesson. Uh in spirit. Because a brother made a comment. And uh dude, brother said uh, basically he said, you know, the world is going further and further in wickedness, and at the same time, the elect are getting closer and closer to that righteous, perfect nature, man. Right? And that's what we're supposed to be made to do. We're supposed to be, we're made to become those perfect vessels, right? The ones, when you read the book of Revelation, let me get it, man. Right? This is uh, Revelation 14 and, and I'll start at three. It says, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. And that 144,000 is talking about the elect. So that's that's what we're doing, man. We're singing that new song, man. And not everybody can pick up this song. Right? You see it. You, Christianity is coming against it. Every, everybody is going to come against this truth. So having that understanding and knowing the temperament of the Lord, as it said in the book of Baruch, in the book of Baruch, it says, uh, for the things that are pleasing, that are pleasing unto the most high, made known unto us. Right? So what are one singing a new song? Not everybody can get this song. The prophecies that go along with it, the, the, the correct demeanor and etiquette to follow, right? Not everybody can get this. It says verse four, it says, these are they which were not defiled with women, right? With these other philosophies, the way to this world, right? The way people operate, right? For they are virgins, meaning, you know, basically per heart, right? We, we separate ourselves for what? That one husband, right? The bridegroom. It says, um, these are they which uh, follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Right? And that's what brothers do. When you do this truth, you're following the Lamb wherever he goes, man. You're doing what the Lord in the Spirit says, man. Right? You didn't, we we're not in this thing to get our own glory, our own self-gratification. Right? We're not in this thing to get rich. We're in this thing to do what, what the Lord commanded us to do. It says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Right? Any other way, we don't follow that way. It says, um... These are they which were redeemed from among men, uh, being the first fruits unto the Most High and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are with fault. They are without fault before the throne of the Most High. And, and this is what we're doing, man. We're trying to present ourselves without fault before the Heavenly Father. And the only way to do that is to be by the book, right? To be by the book. And that's what the world hates, man. The world hates somebody who's by the book because you can't get over them. You can't, you can't uh, 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 compromise them, right? We're, we're by the book brothers, man. We, we live by faith as the scriptures say, right? We follow the word of the Lord to the best of our abilities, man. And that shows perfectness, right? This is not perfect in the sense of the word perfect, meaning no mistakes because no man is going to attain that. Only Yahweh Shai was able to obtain that perfection. But we're perfect in spirit, right? In demeanor, conduct, intention, right? Sincerity, that's, that's the perfection that we're, we're striving for in this truth, right? So this is uh, 2 Corinthians 14. And 34 says, Therefore, therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding, and that's part of the truth, being able to subdue your own understanding, being able to put away the flesh, 
Right? That's the first steps of perfection. To fear the Heavenly Father and put away the flesh. Because you're not going to be able to obtain that perfection by living living out the things of the flesh. Right? It says, um, it says, um, therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive and after death shall obtain mercy. And that's what brothers have been doing, man. All right? We've been, we've been subduing our own understanding, putting our own feelings to the side because that's part of being a man in the street. Right? This world might say it's okay to do this and that. This world might justify your feelings and, and find a way to justify your emotions. But at the end of the day, what does the word of the Lord say? That's that's the key. That's the key of men that have endeavored to do the things of the spirit, man. It says, um, and if you do these things, the Lord said, what? If you reform, reform your heart, meaning form it to what? Where are you going to reform it to? You're going to reform it back unto the understanding of the scriptures, back until what the Lord said. All right, let me get this on water real quick, man. It says, verse 35, it says, For after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again, then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. All right? So going back in the time of Yahweh Shai, those men passed away. We're, we're Lord willing, those men coming back in righteousness, man. After death, we're going to obtain mercy. This is the time where we're obtaining mercy right now. This is For you to have this truth in this time, this is mercy. Right? So, go to my next precept, man. This is 2nd Ezra 7. And... 55 it says um and that and that the faces of them which which have used abstinence go into that word abstinence what are you abstaining from right the flesh the what the deeds of the flesh right lust envy concupiscence right let's get that let's get the works of the flesh this is um these are the things that you're abstaining from. Galatians 5 and 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. These are all the works of the flesh. So these are the things we're abstaining from, man. We're standing for these things in the hopes that that the Lord show us the mercy and we have, we uh, we show forth as being those vessels of righteousness, man. Right. This is this is the hope. Now it says of of the which I will I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So. This build perfectly into the scripture we're going to, right? These are the things that you got to abstain from the works of the flesh. So back in 2nd Ezra 7 and 55, it says, In the faces of them which have which have used abstinence, right? Shall shine above the stars, right? Whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. Right? So abstaining from these things. Cause what? That light to shine upon you. Cause you to do those wise things, man. As Moses, you, we want to be in the place of Moses, man. Where the Lord uh, showed him all those things and what it caused his face to shine. Right? Because wisdom make up the man's face to shine. Right? This is um, Proverbs 4 and 18. And it says, uh, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. You see? So these things that we do day to day, week in, week out, year after year, these things cause us to shine more and more. You can remember when you first came into the truth, right? You 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 weren't giving your due respects. People, uh, people thought you were a joke. But as the years gone by and the Lord calls that spirit to settle, 
right? When those hardships came in, right? Now people take note of you. Now people sit here and consider like, damn, this dude is is really about his shit, right? Because that, hey, look, what does it say? Let your light so shine before men that they may see and may glorify the heavenly father that work with you, man. But, uh, you know, roughly paraphrasing, man. So what your your demeanor, your act, it doesn't mean you go to uh, work and you start going to the scriptures, people. It means that your code of conduct, how you behave yourself, shows forth for that light, man. And more and more into the perfect day, which is when Yahweh Shai comes, you know, that light is going to shine brighter, man. You know, you're going to be put in, 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 in more hellish conditions, but the Lord's going to deliver you in those things. And it's going to cause a, a sense of hardness to come. That shows forth that righteousness that, that the Lord placed into you. It's going to give you the wisdom. It's going to give you the, 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 the way of walking as a man that has been there and done that. Right? And that's, that's, that's valuable, bro. But we're going to become more and more perfect even at his, as this world becomes more and more decrepit. Right? The Lord is all about balance. This is um, Isaiah 40. And um, Isaiah 40 and 31. Oh, my brother's in Dallas finally going live. This is Isaiah 40 and 31. 31. It says, but they that wait upon Yahweh. You know what? I'll start, I'll start at 30. It says, I started 29. He give it power. Unto, uh, he give it power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. And it's high like this. It says, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall be shall shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon Yahweh shall renew their strength. Right? That's that constantly from, from, from one level of shine to a next, man. It says, But they that wait on upon Yahweh shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with, uh, with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. You see? The renewing of the strength, the refreshing is going to come. So, um, 2 Corinthians 3. In 18, it says, hey, uh, I'll start at, uh, I'll start at 16. It says, nevertheless, when it shall turn, when it shall turn to Yahweh, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord, it says, now Yahweh is that spirit. And where the spirit of Yahweh is, there is liberty. But we all, with one open face, beholding as in the in a glass of the glory of Yahweh, are changed into the same image of image from glory to glory, even as the spirit of our Lord, you see? From glory to glory, man, we're going from glory to glory. One level of understanding, one level of, of existence to the next, man. Right? This whole truth being in this thing is all about building towards that perfect man. All about, all about, you know, cutting off the BS to get to that right, perfect soul for the Heavenly Father, man. Putting on your wedding garment. Right? Trying to be perfect for the Lord when he comes. This is what it's about. Right? But you got to be able to label those things in your life that ain't ain't right. Label those actions in which you do to show forth <laughs> a, a, a path of which to fucking construct, man. You can't go to a fucking field and just start throwing bricks and shit. You got to make sure you pick the right spot. Right? And that's what you got to do in this thing. We, we chop down all the BS to become perfect. Right? We don't do these things for nothing, man. This is, um, I ended on this one. This is Proverbs 8, or Romans 8. So I get where's it at. Romans 8 and, uh, Romans 8 and 29. It says, for for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed 
to be conformed. I mean, with form, meaning with form, to be with the form, right? To the image of his son, right? So wasn't Yahweh Shai perfect, right? Are we going to get all out perfection in deed and work? No, we're going to get perfection, right? Within the spirit of perfection, man, right? Having the mindset of doing these things day in, day out, chopping at, you know, breaking down all the BS alpha of us through the spirit of the Lord, man, through the Lord chastising us and keeping the faith, right? But this is going to make us be conformed unto the image of the Heavenly Father's Son, meaning Yahweh Shai himself, man, right? At the end of this, the goal is to be all like little Yahweh Shai's, man, right? Great in judgment, great in mercy, right? A, a balance in austerity, right? It says, um, for for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, right? Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also, them he all, also called, and whom he called them. Uh, he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified, right? So those are those perfect righteous souls that the Lord is going to have in these last days, man. But, you know, Lord willing, this is edifying. I'm going to say, call Allah, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, 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 by Shem